Welcome to Startup Hack. This is our series about coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a firm believer that even if you aren't the one doing the coding in your organization, that learning to code will help you to more effectively manage your team and your product. So I think every entrepreneur should dig in and learn to code. I don't think you'll ever regret it, but let's go ahead and get started today. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. So as you, as always, if you just go to uh, S. Thomason slash Startup Hack, uh, S. L. Thomason slash Startup Hack, you can see all the code samples here for the previous uh, videos that we've done. And so make sure you go and check those out if you haven't seen the uh, previous ones because they work in sequential order, so it will help you. But today we're going to dig in, and uh, today we're going to go through a tutorial that shows you how to call an ASP.NET six core, uh, sorry, .NET Core six web app. Uh, web API using JavaScript uh, using the Fetch API. Now, this kind of fundamental principle that you're going to use and you're going to see today is a very simple example, but this is actually how all of modern uh, web apps work. So whether you're using Vue or React Native or Angular or whatever, they all use a very similar uh, functionality. We're going to see a very simple demonstration using JavaScript and uh, some very simple web uh, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS examples today. So let's go ahead and dig in and uh, get started on this. So as with always, um, you know, you're, we're starting in program.cs, and we start off with creating the builder. We're going to use our in-memory database again. Um, this is an easy way for us to be able to demonstrate this, but it means every time we restart the application, the database gets blown away. So yesterday where we worked in Mongo, this will not stay around. So we could do the same thing in Mongo just as easy, um, and that might be a fun project for you to try, is to try to see if you can swap this out to Mongo. We will use Swagger this time. So... Again, using Postman or one of these other tools, Curl or anything the like would work. Uh, in this case, we're going to use Swagger. It'll be easier for us to dig through this sample today. Uh, and the rest is pretty standard. So, um, you know, we have our general app settings, uh, not anything really uh, too monumental in there. Uh, we have a single controller, uh, so the to-do items. And so this is going to be very similar to what we did a couple of days ago. In fact, I think it's almost exactly identical. Um, and then we have the same thing with the model. Uh, this is the same thing that we used a couple, data bit, couple days ago with the in-memory database to define the database structure, and then our to-do items, again, just as the model to be able to map to. So what's really new today is this www root folder, and the www root is where all of our static web files are going to be. So your static web files are an index.html, a site.js uh, JavaScript file, and a site.css. So this one's going to go through some of the styling. I'm not really much of a styling guy, so I'm not going to work uh, super closely to this. If you're a styling guy, fantastic. Uh, world needs a lot of you. Um, I'm more of a functional guy, so we're going to talk a little bit more about the JavaScript and uh, particularly about the index um, HTML. So in general, your HTML is going to be the structure of the page. Uh, this is where you'll lay out all of the different DOM elements, document object model or DOM uh, elements that are on the page. And so this is where you'll lay all of these out um, to make them functional. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one of these because while this is a tutorial, I'm expecting that you're downloading this and running this code yourself and playing around with this and uh, figuring out which parts work. And again, if uh, I'm going too fast or I'm not explaining things enough, make sure you leave comments down below uh, and like and subscribe to the channel because we build on more every day. So uh, this is the HTML which goes through and uh, lays out all the individual items uh, and we'll go through what those are. And then this is the JavaScript. So in general, your JavaScript is going to be what makes things move on the page or what gives the page functionality. Um, and so uh, th this is what we're going to take this JavaScript code and this is what we're going to post against, uh, post, get, all of the above, um, against our existing um, uh, API. So we've learned in the last couple of days a lot about APIs. We've used different ways to do them. Now we're kind of starting to put some of these technologies together to be able to see an actual web application. So let's go and fire this bad boy up and see where we get. Now, um, while this guy comes up, so let, let's talk a little bit about some of these uh, different items here. Let's see if I can get this to snap to my window here. And as we go through the HTML here, you can see, uh, you know, we can see in the HTML, 
Uh, so we have our to-do crud. So this is when the H1. We have this add. So we have a couple of H3s hanging around. And then we have a form uh, that we can submit right here, which has this item that we can add things to, and we'll add to our list down below. And then we have the edit form. So is it complete is down here. So this is this table that we're going to be building out down here. And we're going to be dynamically adding some things to the table as we work through the database and store them into the database. So uh, let's, go ahead and get, let's go ahead and test this guy out. So I'm going to say item one, and we'll hit add. Now you notice there was no page reload. This is that asynchronous call that we have. So the JavaScript is calling the fetch API, which we're going to walk through here in a minute. Um, and so it's calling that fetch API into the API and then back to the server. So let's do item two. We're going to do a couple of these. Um, item three and Spencer's cool item. Okay, now we've got three of these items to work against. We can actually edit these items, which is where we can go and say, not really that cool and save it. Now you notice it's there. Now, one of the things is, is we do have an in-memory database. So as long as we keep our debugger running here in the background, I can reload this, so it's simulating. And then notice it's going and refetching and really re-pulling all of that from the server. So as this fetches from the server each time, you can tell, see that it's counting for to-do items, uh, checking whether they're complete or not, and giving us the option to delete one. So if we want to get rid of number two here, it means it's gone. And this changes to, to three. So cool little web app, all built with JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and an API. So let's dig in a little bit on exactly what it's doing in here. So we kind of went through what the layout is with HTML. I'm not going to go through a ton of this because this is a programming course. If you really want to get into layout, HTML, CSS, that's cool. Uh, go run to those, but W3Schools is a great one. Um, but you can definitely play around with this HTML and see what that's doing. Um, the part that I really want to get into is some of the functionality. So let's dig into the JavaScript here. So the very first thing is we have a function called get items, add items, delete items. So just like everything, you can hit control mo and it will collapse the functions. I personally like this view, it makes it a little more readable for me. And so as we're working through different functions in JavaScript, uh, in JavaScript we call them functions, in uh, C Sharp we refer to them as methods. So I'm gonna close out some of these ones that we're not gonna be using very much. This is just our model, we won't really be changing that at all. Um, and this is the context uh, which just defines what's in the database, so not again much there. So really our, our, our two spots that we're really interested in talking about today are these two, um, are the controller, which is where we're managing the actual API side of things, and then the site.js, and so this is the JavaScript. So one of the first things I wanna tell you as you're starting to dig into a web application is anytime, I'm a big fan of Chrome, but this does most uh, develop modern tool, uh, modern browsers do this, but if you hit Control Shift I, um, this is gonna open up your dev tools, and your dev tools will allow you to see uh, various, to see the activities that are happening. Uh, now, depending on what your screen size is and everything, you can actually pin, uh, pick, you can even pop this out, whatever. I'm going to pin it down here just to make it a little bit more viewable for what we're working on today. So we're going to go through what a couple of these are. Down here on the bottom is your console, which gives you uh, where any of your error messages are going to be. And so if you get an error message while you're programming this, you, they'll be showing down on the console. Um, as we make a request, so if I reload the page, you'll be able to see... Uh, let me resize some of this a little bit here. Working on a small window here now. Um, so you can see these requests where it reached out and got all of the to-do items. Um, and so this request is the request going out, and then you can see the response, which is what was coming back. You can also see it into a preview mode where it formats it into a little bit prettier JSON that makes it easier to read. But so this was the response that came back from the server. So when I talk about the request, the JavaScript is going to make the request uh, using DOM elements, and it's going to make a request out to the server, to the API, and that server is going to respond. So here's what we sent, and you can see uh, the actual, um, so you can see the post here, right? So this was, or sorry, this was a get, and then you can see that it made, made this, uh, this other get, um, which then made this request out here. And then it had its own uh, response, uh, which was which is the data that came back. So um, we can see some of these, and some of the ways we can even um, uh, do some debugging here. Um, so we can debug in in the JavaScript, and there's a couple of different ways that we can do the debugging in the JavaScript. Um, frequently, you can get this to actually work where you hit this. 
See, and you have to actually, so debugging with uh, JavaScript in here can be a little tricky. Um, and so what, what I usually do when I'm debugging here, um, let's just say debugging. So what I usually do is if I'm going to, now I'm going to lose all the items that I made. But if I'm going to do this, what I'll actually do is just type debugger and hit save. Now when I run this, uh, let's do a debugger here. So you can add these debuggers in here. You always want to make sure you take them out later before you ship your code. But um, when I run this debugger now, and we're going to get the, the browser up here. So when I open this now, if, if your developer tools are open and you have one of these debuggers in here, you can actually refresh the page and you'll notice that it stops. So now you can actually run the debugger right in the browser. And so there's a lot of really handy uh, things in here. So it'll tell us what the URI is. We can hover over things. We can see what the data is. So um, this will allow us to then debug inside of it. So it's very similar to Visual Studio. You have your, your debugging tools over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, mostly because uh, I don't really want that fetching every time we do it. So let's, let's do it while we add. So you can actually save this and refresh your page. And now in doing that, you notice that the debugger is gone from here. So if I refresh this, it didn't debug. But now if I go to add an item, test one. So it'll stop here, and we can start to inspect various different things. So where it says document.getElement by ID, we can actually start to step through these. It's, this very, it's the same keys as your Visual Studio here. So once you do that, then you can actually go and look and say, hey, look, this is all the attributes on that text box. There's a lot. Uh, the DOM is very, uh, very, I don't want to say complex, but very full. So this fetch, you are, this fetch is actually a JavaScript, which allows you to make an asynchronous call to the server. So without posting the entire page, you can actually make an asynchronous call. So what this is going to do is it's going to use the method of post. It's going to set the headers with content type and all of that. And then it's going to give the body of the JSON of this item that we fetched. So we got this, we created this item, which again is, a, is just a, a, um, a JSON object. We're then going to post that, right? Just like we were testing with our swagger here, we're going to post that to uh, to the server. So if we actually went and looked at this, we can actually go look at the server, just like we have before, and look at the swagger. Hey, look, there's our swagger. We should you know we should recognize this. So what this is doing is this is actually programmatically doing a post to uh, the URI, which in this case is API slash to do items. So we can see our API slash to do items, and it's doing this post. So this is the one that we're doing programmatically here. Just like we've been testing this over the last couple of days, and we've been testing this using Swagger. Swagger is just a handy tool, but really it's actually doing the exact same thing that we're doing in our code right here. So it's going to do this fetch, uh, this fetch, uh, and it's going to run this, and then it will come back. Uh, if it gets an error, then it'll hit the catch. Uh, if it responds uh, correctly, then it'll just use do, follow these, and then it'll say then, and it'll do that. So, uh, so we can come back over here and look at the code where it's a little easier to look at. So in general, what it's going to do is it does the fetch, and then, notice the then keyword, then if it, does, if, if it gets a response in JSON, then it takes the, gets the items and refreshes it. So this is the same thing as when we load the page initially, and then it's going to add the name, the value. It's going to reset that. If there was an error, then we'd say, hey, it's unable to add an item. So, um, and that's what this is doing. So you can see with each one of these, with the delete, it's going to call the fetch, and it's going to use then this, the delete. So just like our Swagger page, right, where we've been testing with delete, this delete, now we're doing it programmatically. So you can see how little of code it requires to actually delete against or fetch against the API. Um, there's some helper functions here that you can see doing some things, and so this is what's set in like the name and how many items there were and some of those things. Um, the update item, so this is if we're going to update it, it's going to do the put, right? So it's going to do the put and then against the body and then do and then set these if there was any errors. So uh, this display count is just another little helper method to uh, check from to do to to do's, which is kind of interesting. They're very, uh, the sample is very thorough. And, uh, and then from there, it'll actually set the, the count of the number of items that came back. Um, so this is just some JavaScript that I would go through and play around with and make sure you understand exactly how it's doing these full round trips to the server. Oops, I just closed it. 
um, and how you're going to run, how it's doing these full round trips to the server. Uh, because this is really the, the key here is while we didn't change our APIs today, the JavaScript is doing what we've been doing with our Swagger. Um, it's actually then making these programmatic calls asynchronously to the server. And so this is, again, how Angular works, how Vue works. You have your, your client-side code, in this case, some very simple JavaScript, that's actually going to post against the server side, which is the API. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this is uh, some good code samples that you're able to then build off of and start with. Um, now, make sure you keep your kids safe online using the Clean Router. Uh, it's a fantastic product. We've been using it, uh, been selling it for years and sold over 20,000 of them. We uh, also make sure you now keep your kids safe online with the clean phone. It's fantastic. It allows you to manage all of your kids' uh, settings, how much time they're spending. You can set black and white lists for certain times. So you can say, hey, I only want them to have YouTube from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, you know, the, these are the kind of things that you can do with clean phone. So make sure that you're doing that. And uh, overall, uh, just make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel here because uh, you know, we work really hard to provide the, lots of things for you, and um, we're, you know, we're uh, continuing to help, and so make sure you follow along, and if you haven't followed uh, the previous tutorials, make sure you go back and watch those, and we will be, bring you more again on Monday, so make sure that you follow along with us. We'll catch you next time.